back to this next video on fund development. I'm David Schreier. You can download the resources for this video by clicking on the link that was emailed to you by Felician Services. In our last video, we looked at major gifts and the importance of understanding your rights. Who's the right person to make an ask? What's the right amount of the gift? When is the right time to make a request? Today, we'll continue that conversation and we'll look at gift solicitation and stewardship. There are several key points I'd like to share with you today. The first key point is to be prepared. We know it's the right time to make a gift solicitation when first we've made our own gift and we understand the programmatic and fund development needs of our ministry and we've done some good information gathering and research on our prospects. It's important that we understand our prospects' needs for information and their motivations and their interests before we ever sit down and talk with them about a gift. There are some myths about major gift solicitations. Sometimes we think that people are too busy to want to sit down and talk to me or they won't want to share anything about their lives. In fact, donors will make time to sit and talk with you. So it's a matter of going from selling your ministry to telling your ministry story and exploring which of your programs and projects resonate with donors and which are of interest to them. The second key point is thinking about your initial approach to sitting down with a donor. It's important to reach out to them and let them know you'd like to, to sit and visit and sometimes donors may say, oh, that's not necessary, you don't need to sit down with me. And don't make it into a big deal. Let them know about other donors in the area that you're planning to visit and you can assure them this will only be a 20 minute conversation. There are three reasons why it's helpful to meet in person. First, meeting in person conveys a sense of urgency and commitment. It lets donors know that they're important in your eyes, and that's a very favorable signal to send. Second, it allows you to make your request and have your conversation with your whole being, with your eyes, with your mouth, with your mannerisms, and convey your sincerity and your genuineness and your interests. And it also lets you respond to the donor's behavior and the donor's questions in a very personal way. And finally, the fact is, it's just harder to say no in person. Solicitation teams can work very well, so it can be helpful to send a board member and a CEO to meet with a donor. It allows greater opportunities for chemistry. The CEO will bring program expertise and the board member will bring vision and heart. So on the first visit, it's a matter of building rapport. We want to ask open-ended questions and understand the needs and interests of the donor and present our organization or present particular programs or projects and see what the reaction is. Ideally, if you can meet in a donor's home or office, that's the strongest setting to, to sit down and talk. You should be prepared to make an ask, but you should also be prepared to wait. You'll have to read the situation. So maybe that particular visit you'll ask for a gift, maybe you won't. It's, it's a matter of honoring where the donor is at. The third key point I'd like to make is about the importance of asking questions. And there are a couple of different types of questions to ask. First are feeling questions, where we understand a donor's beliefs about a particular issue or cause. How do you feel this community is addressing homelessness right now? The second type of question is a need question, which gets more at a donor's motivations. Donor A, you've been known to be very generous in Livonia. What caused those gifts that you made in previous years? There are questions that we'll have for donors. For example, why did you first start making gifts to our ministry? What is it that we're doing right? Are there any other organizations that are doing similar work to us? But then there will also be questions from donors. Why do you need this funding right now? Who else is being asked for a gift? Will the project go forward if I don't make a gift to you? The fourth key point is knowing the importance of when to request a gift. Rarely will a donor say to you, all right, you've sufficiently informed me, you've made me a co-owner in the success of the ministry, I am now ready for you to ask me for a gift. You'll really have to read the situation and have an intuitive sense of, has there been enough cultivation? Does the donor feel educated enough? Do they feel close enough to where we are right now, where we're both in sync? So it's important to know when to ask 
and it's important to know when not to ask, but just don't fall into the trap of ready, aim, 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 and it's never fire. At some point, a gift request should be made. And you don't need to worry that an individual is going to be upset with you for asking them for a gift. Donors will never shout back in your face, no, 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 how dare you ask me for such a thing. Actually, many donors will feel uh, disappointed that they can't give you more, and rarely is the answer no. Sometimes the answer is no, not now, and that's fine. That's uh, something that leads us to additional cultivation. There are some errors to avoid in solicitation. Not knowing enough about the donor to begin with, not having spent enough time cultivating them, not asking for a gift at all, or not asking for a large enough gift because we haven't thought things through, or talking too much and not listening, and not asking questions. Those are all things we'd like to avoid. Now there are helpful ways to phrase our request when it comes time to ask for a gift. We may not want to come bluntly out and say, so will you give us $50,000? We may want to say things like, well, we'd like to invite you to support us with a gift of, or would you consider making a gift of, or we're only turning to our top donors to ask if they would support us in this particular way. Those are softer, more respectful ways of making a request. Let's take a look at the following video clip that shows one way of making a donor solicitation. Dave, thank you so much for the interest that you've shown in our ministry. Uh, thank you very much for all the information It's uh, and for sharing, not just your time, but about the good works that the ministry is doing. Does this seem like a worthwhile project to invest in? The vision of the Shelter for Homeless Persons seems very responsive to our community's changing needs, and the project has great potential to really transform individuals' lives. Mm, I'm so glad to hear that. Are there any other questions that I can answer for you about the project? I'm very satisfied with the information you provided. Oh, wonderful. Well, then I'd like to invite you to support this project with a gift of $40,000. Uh, this year, that would be a little bit difficult. We're trying to sell our house. But I think we could do 25000 25000 would be a very generous gift. If it makes it any easier for you, you could take your $40,000 gift and pay it over two years. So $20,000 each year. Well, I think we could do that. Oh, wonderful. Well, I'll prepare a pledge letter and I'll send it over to your office tomorrow. Great. Thank you Thank so you. much. Did you notice how the solicitor showed flexibility in his request to the donor? Sometimes donors may raise objections because we're talking about large sums of money. And it's important to remember that objections are often questions. So when you hear an objection, uh, listen carefully, restate it, acknowledge it, and then respond in a thoughtful way. Please take a look at the following clip which shows how to respond to a donor objection. Todd, thank you so much for the great questions that you've asked about our ministry. We really appreciate it. You know what, Dave? Thank you for your time. Yeah. Oh, it was my pleasure. At this point, we'd like to ask if you would join us and make a gift of $25,000 for our food pantry operations. You know what? I've learned a lot about the food pantry. Um, you know what? But I'm a little bit more concerned about the homebound people, like, like seniors that can't drive. You know, on a personal level, my mother is one of those individuals that can't drive. How does a program like that work for them? Oh, that's a great question. We actually have a special mobile feeding program for homebound seniors, and it's a very effective program. Costs about $1,000 a day. Um, is that something you'd be interested in? Dave, you know what, that sounds a, sounds a little high. Sounds a bit much. Actually, I can understand why it does sound expensive. It's actually a very cost-effective program, and your gift of $25,000 would actually feed homebound seniors for a month. So, Todd, what if I do this? What if I give you a detailed proposal that just breaks out all the project costs and expenses, and you can take a look at it, and if it still looks okay to you after that, you can just sign the pledge letter that I include. Okay, you know what, hey, that sounds good, sounds, you know, really flexible for me to be able to look at it, and thank you. Great, thank you. Did you notice how the solicitor showed accommodation in meeting the objection of the donor? The final point I'd like to talk about is the importance of stewardship. Stewardship literally means to look after or care for, and it's important that we care for our donors and donor relationships.
So there are some stewardship activities to do before a gift, like staying in good communication, sending articles or newsletters to donors we think might be of interest to them, maybe even asking for advice and counsel. And then there are stewardship activities that come after a gift. First and foremost, saying thank you. We can never say thank you enough. So saying thank you by phone, if it's a larger gift, certainly sending an acknowledgement letter in a timely manner. Thanking donors helps them feel closer to your organization. Stewardship is really good customer service. And when we do this well, it leads us to develop strategies for the next gift with the donor. We will be holding our next Q&A session on March 3rd, and this will be an hour-long session with your peers to not only ask questions, but to share some of your experiences with major donor solicitation and stewardship. I've provided a few questions for you to reflect on ahead of time, and we'll look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you so much. Our next video will be on corporate giving. Businesses can support ministries in a number of different ways from cash grants to loan executives to in-kind services and pro bono services and we'll explore how to build the most robust, meaningful, multifaceted approach with businesses. See you then.